Sometimes drum corps aren't close to where you currently are. So, if you plan to audition for a group, you're going to have to travel a pretty far distance, and most people choose to fly. But, what if you've never flown before? Well, welcome to Rocky Point Vlog, where my goal is to help you by sharing my experiences throughout drum corps, marching band, and now high school band directing. Roll the intro. So I just got back from a trip to Florida, where I obviously flew there, and I got to see my good cadet mellophone pal Nick Watkins get married. And on the flight back, I was kind of thinking, I've got this whole thing streamlined at this point, but what about younger Rocky? The younger one that had no idea what he was getting into when he decided to hop on a plane and was really nervous about everything from security to checking bags and what's allowed and what's not. So I'm making this video to help anybody out that's either flying to their first drum corps camp or they're going to fly to spring training or just maybe flying in general and you somehow stumbled upon a drum corps video that's related to flying. I'm going to help you through all of that. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So before you ever get on the plane. Let's talk about some of the things you have to do. Packing. Most airlines allow you to bring one personal item like a laptop bag, book bag, or purse, and one small carry-on suitcase. Most airlines have measurements for these on their websites in case you need to check those out. On these carry-ons, there is a limit to what you are legally allowed to have in the cabin with you, like the amount of liquids, uh, razor types, etc. Have a look on airline websites for more specifics. Generally, a single bladed disposable razor is good and any liquids that are 3.4 ounces or less in a plastic Ziploc bag are good to go too. Um, do not pack your instrument. Brass, mouthpieces work just fine and percussion sticks are good too. It saves a lot of hassle in the airport when you're not having to work out the whole worrying about an instrument thing. So let's say you want to bring an air mattress and not everything's going to fit on the carry-on luggage that you decided to grab. Well, you're going to have to check a bag. This bag can be your standard suitcase or really almost any size. Um, but make sure it doesn't weigh more than 50 pounds. They will charge you more if it weighs more than 50. Usually it's 25 per trip per checked bag by itself. Um, so if you're flying to Cayman back, it's a total of $50 round trip. And that's if it's in the correct weight under $50. And you won't have access to this during the flight. Just something to keep in mind. Now let's go buy a flight. I personally recommend Google Flights, which is flights.google.com, because when I go to this website, I can see all the flights that I need to see from all the websites, and there's no weird extra, like, I don't know, a lot of the Expedia and Kayak places have weird things that just make me feel uncomfortable, like I'm being sold weird ads or extra things, and Google's pretty straightforward in how it presents the information. So I really, really, really enjoy using Google Flights I also love using its tracking features. So let's say I'm planning on going on this trip, but I'm a little far out from it and I want to make sure I'm getting the right price. I can see the price history of the flights I'm looking at for those dates. Maybe not the specific flight I've chosen, but the dates that I have, any flights that are coming in or going out on that day that would fit the criteria I'm looking at. It'll show me the trends for those prices. You can also sign up and it'll give you email alerts so that you can get an update on a price maybe when you're not clicking refresh on your page all the time. Just another note that most drum corps really recommend that you get a flight departing from camp on Sunday at a, a later evening time so that you don't have to skip out on the end of camp so they can get you to the airport. So make sure you check uh, with either the handbook of the Corps or the camp packet or whatever it is you've got to make sure that you're complying as best you can with that. And they will understand if perhaps you're, you know, there's like a price thing or something that works out, but just try to stay as long as you can because that's golden information that you won't get back. Plus it'll improve your chances if you're there the whole time and people really smile upon that. So in terms of airlines that I personally have flown uh, and trust, um, as much as you can. I, I've flown American and Delta and Southwest. Southwest most re recently, so I'm not as familiar with that, and I kind of enjoy its different practices. So if you have Southwest, people love it. I enjoyed it, it was great. Um, so book Southwest, that's my newest recommendation. But American and Delta are your pretty standard um, choices too. Just like other things in life, flights are expensive. So book early, but make sure you don't book too early. 
Rumor has it that Tuesday evenings are the best time to book cheap flights. And also, you want to make sure you wait until about two to three weeks in advance uh, of your flight that you want to take. But you don't want to wait too late because there's that sweet spot and then things get really pricey. And before that, they just kind of keep it at a constant rate. So keep watching. Use the Google Flight thing. It's going to work out. I hope. So, another thing to make sure as you're on this Google Flight site that takes you to whatever website you're ordering at, make sure you double check your information before you confirm your flight order. Most places allow you to either ask for a refund within 24 hours or change information, um, but after that 24 hour period, it is non-refundable. So you need to make sure you get it right, you double, triple check it so that you're not sitting there wondering if you got it right the whole time. So really double check your information. and. Spelling, that's that's a big one. Spelling, especially when you got a last name like mine and nobody can seem to spell correctly. So you'll get a confirmation email. They'll usually remind you to check in online 24 hours before. You can check in when you get to the airport. I prefer to check in 24 hours, within 24 hours of my flight online so that I can have my mobile boarding pass or print it out at home, go straight into the airport, not have to worry about going up to the little kiosk and punching in my information. Uh, and I can, if I have just carry-ons, I can get on the plane. And if I need to check a bag, I just go up to the check bag counter, ask them to do the thing. I give them money or, you know, depending on what the charges are. And then I go get on the plane. Uh, or go through security and then get on the plane. Uh, so it's not as big a deal. I prefer to have my mobile boarding passes on my phone and just that way I don't even have to worry about it. But make sure your phone is charged so that you can actually show them your mobile boarding passes. It does you no good. So if, you, if you're one of those people that finds your phone on empty a lot, I would, I would uh, either charge it up or maybe print. The next thing I'm reminding you to do is arrive two hours early. It says it in the fine print, it tells you in the email, most people are like, two hours early? Why do I need to be there so early, right? It's not like catching a bus or a car. Um, there's a lot of things, especially if it's your first time that you're gonna have to do that you may not be familiar with. Um, and even now as a veteran drum corps flight, regular flight guy, whenever I can, uh, I still arrive two hours early. Um, especially if the airport is, you know, super crowded or it's a crowded type of day or a lot of people are going through. Uh, when I lived in Greensboro, that airport's usually not very busy. It's kind of small. Um, and then now that I'm in the Raleigh-Durham area, th this airport gets pretty busy uh, and lines can get pretty long. So make sure that you arrive accordingly um, as you're going into this. And if you're checking bags, it's especially important because I found this out the hard way along with another friend of mine as we were about to fly to a cadet camp. Uh, we arrived, we were running behind, um, and it was about 30 minutes, and we noticed there's like no line. It was Greensboro Airport. We were good. Um, so we really, really had to pee. So we went to the bathroom. We come back. We've got about 29 minutes now until the flight takes off. So. We go to the counter after that and we say we'd like to check these bags because we're going to Pennsylvania and doing, you know, cadet drum course stuff. We're taking our air mattresses. And they said, sorry, we don't check bags after 30 minutes before the flight is supposed to depart. And we're like, it's only been a minute, but uh, you can't fight that. So they're pretty serious about it. So just get do yourself a favor and, and get there with plenty of time to spare. It's better to have too much time than not enough. Okay, now let's speak about security. Make sure you get in the right line for your airline and your terminal and your gate. All of this can be found on your boarding pass. Once you get to the front of the security line, they'll ask to see your photo ID, which uh, there's something about a real ID that's changing within the next little bit, so um, make sure your ID is updated. Um, again, they'll ask to see your ID and they'll ask to see your boarding pass to make sure that you are the same person that is getting on the plane. A uh, funny story about this is I haven't had my photo on my license updated uh, in about 10 years. So I look 15 because uh, I was in the picture and I renewed it online. Normally I would have retaken a picture by now, but that's beside the point. Uh, I remember going to the airport one time and they had me spell my first name, where, where, I'm, where I lived, you know, all that stuff because they didn't believe that my portrait on the license was the same because I've just changed so much in 10 years. 
hashtag glow up. So after you do this, you'll wait in line to get into the scanner x-ray section, as I like to call it. Um, so here, you're going to want to take off your shoes, your belt, uh, take out any electronics that are bigger than a cell phone, including a cell phone. You can keep your Apple Watch on um, or other uh, Fitbit, whatever it is, you can keep those on. You put all of these in a bin. Uh, each electronic must be in its own separate bin as well as your liquids. Um, so be mindful when packing that you don't pack all of your electronics. I ran into that issue. I was trying to get work done on the way down to this wedding knowing that this was going to be a long flight. Especially at drum corps camp, you don't need all of that stuff. Just pack light. You may not even probably need to take an iPad or a laptop or any of that. Just bring yourself. You're going to have all of your stuff in your backpack. I recommend as a carry-on. Uh, drum corps wise, you know, like uh, your water bottle, your towel, your mouthpiece, your music, uh, drill if you've got it, you know, all that's going on the backpack. Uh, and then if you can fit everything in a little carry-on suitcase, great. If not, you check that bag because I know I checked it because I had to have my air mattress. Uh, and uh, you, you go to camp and that's that. So electronics require separate bins and it's, uh, it's a nightmare because they're afraid you're going to um, hide things in there and things will explode. So just, just leave many of them home. Take your cell phone, take your watch. That's about all you're really going to need. Uh, you'll be too busy otherwise or too tired. I also recommend that if you are taking a carry-on as opposed to checking a bag that if you've got all your liquids in a little plastic baggie that you have those and these electronics if you're taking them ready to go as you're getting ready to go open this line so you can be like boop 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 through through the security line versus the people that like take forever to find everything and get you know so be, have a plan, have a game plan when you step up there so that you're not holding up the line and also you're not holding yourself up so you can get through um, and it's, it's all good. So once you've got everything up there on this little, uh, it's like a roller highway, it's not a conveyor belt but it's just rollers. You want to push all your stuff until it gets onto the conveyor belt which is really close to the x-ray machine uh, and then you let it go as soon as all your stuff is on that conveyor belt and ready to go. Um, security gets really mad if you wait and let other people push your stuff up. I, I, I don't know. I guess they want you to do it yourself. Um, so make sure you do that so you don't get yelled at and your day goes better. So after that, you get in line to go in the little scanner that looks like it's out of like a Halo video game when they were testing Master Chief's shields. That's a random tangent. I'm sorry. Different audience. Um, and you put your hands up and then they scan you. Uh, so I always close my eyes during that point don't know why I don't think it does anything it's not like it prevents them from scanning my eyeballs or anything but uh, yeah um, it's a quick process they you step out and then they say all right you're clear and then you can get all your stuff put your shoes back on put your belt back on if you've got it get all the liquids back into your suitcase or wherever you had them uh, and put your electronics back in the bag too once you've got your life together it's time to go ahead to your gate assuming that you're at the right terminal, which you should be because they checked your boarding pass. So again, now's the time to double check the boarding pass, go to the correct gate. There's usually signs up above somewhere that shows you gates A1 through 7, gates 23 through 25. You just need to make sure that you're looking and corresponding the direction you need to go. My first priority is always find the gate that I'm going to be at. Um, that way, uh, if something's to happen or if I'm running late, like it's going to be fine. Find it first, then worry about getting food, souvenirs, or whatever you're going to spend a lot of money on because it's the airport. Or if you have to go to the bathroom. I'd say find your gate first, know where home base is, then go do everything else. Another thing uh, to really keep in mind here is when you find your gate, you can't just leave your stuff there. Anywhere in the airport, you can't just leave your belongings. You'll hear it over the intercom. They'll report that stuff. They'll confiscate it. They'll assume it's a bomb. Uh, so don't leave it unattended. It'll get stolen or worse, confiscated by the government. So keep everything with you at all times and uh, life will go swimmingly. So you can't like save your seat with a coat. Just know where you're going to be, know where it is, look around, then go to shops, go to the bathroom so you kind of have your bearings about you so you know where you're going in case something happens. 
after you've gone to the bathroom, gotten food, had your fill of the really expensive like souvenir markets in the airports, uh, you can go sit at your gate calmly, you can put in headphones, you can listen to music, you can do homework, uh, you can watch YouTube videos, or you can hit the like button on this video. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm. Um, and subscribe if you're feeling it. But, I mean, whatever your choice is, you can just sit there and chill. Make sure you're keeping an ear out for announcements over the intercom, specifically the person that's giving the announcements for your gate, so kind of look at who's at your gate and who's gonna pick up the phone and what their voice sounds like when they talk on it. Because you never know, I've had this happen so many times, flights are not very reliable. I always find myself going, oh, that flight's delayed. My flight was delayed going to Orlando this weekend to go see Nick get married. Um, so uh, a flight could be delayed or canceled at the drop of a hat, so you really need to be vigilant and just keep an ear out um, and be aware of your surroundings, even though you're chilling. So, yeah. The next thing you need to know is the flights start boarding 30 minutes before the departure time on your boarding pass. It should say that on the boarding pass, mobile or not, but just in case you miss it, 30 minutes before, they're going to start the boarding process. Uh, it's a slower process than you probably think it should be. Um, so stay close, especially during that 30 minute window. Um, you'll board by group number, which is just, you know, the more expensive tickets get to go first, and if you bought less expensive tickets, you get on the plane last, so you sit towards the back usually. But I also don't get it, Southwest doesn't assign seats, but everywhere else seems to assign seats. So what's the point of group numbers? I, you know, I don't know, I'm not a, I don't own a flight company. Um, but in some cases, there are there is limited overhead space, so if you've got those two carry-ons, the personal item and, well, in this case, the backpack uh, and your little carry-on luggage, uh, they may ask you to check one of those, uh, usually your luggage, um, so that, and it'll be checked for free at the counter, you're not going to have to go back through security, um, and it'll show up at your final destination. And, yeah, make sure you grab things out of there uh, that would be subject to stuff under pressure. Um, there's a list of that on websites for uh, airlines and whatnot. So just, just have a look at that. A quick Google search will probably help you out too. So once you're settled on a plane, it's time to sit back, listen to the crew instructions, sleep, relax, and arrive at your drum corps destination or wherever it is you're headed. Now once you land, it could be a hot minute before you get off the plane because the people in the front got to get off after, you know, they connected everything and the thing and the plane and the, the little walkway connects to the plane and then the people get off and they're slow because they're getting the luggage and they're probably, you know, they're flying first class so they've got a little bit of money to spend and taking their time. That's okay. Just chill out. Once you've landed, you are allowed to turn your flame, flame. <laughs> You are allowed to turn your phone off of airplane mode, so you can text people, you can browse the internet once you've, you're, you know, all the wheels have touched the ground uh, on the plane. And once you're off the plane, go to baggage claim, get those check bags if you have them, and if not, go to baggage claim anyway, which is usually where cores uh, schedule their pickups with shuttles. I know that's what it was for me at Cadets, that's where I made a lot of friends, was at the baggage claim, uh, waiting to get picked up on the bus or the van to go to cadet land, uh, the camp. So uh, I would make sure you read your, again, your, your camp packet or whatever it is that you have as far as information for the camp and make sure you know where that rendezvous point is so that you can get picked up, whether that be baggage claim or somewhere else. It's usually baggage claim because that's where ground transportation comes to pick people up. And from there, it's pretty easy. Uh, on the way back, it's the same process, you know, check in 24 hours before. You're gonna be tired from camp, so a lot of this might go over your head, but just make sure you check in 24 hours before and remember these steps. This video is going to be here if you need it while you're sitting in the airport or while you're getting ready to pack up a camp or you're sitting in the van going to camp. So uh, hopefully it's not too scary. And also you've got a bunch of people around you probably that's, uh, that are going to help you uh, figure that out before you get to the airport if you're coming back from a camp. If you're on the way to the airport from spring training or some other sort of event, you can't say that anyone's going to be with you. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Make sure you catch that shuttle on time to go to the airport and don't miss your flight. But other than that, that is the best way I could condense flying to drum corps camps or whatever it is you're flying to uh, as a first timer or an uh, almost first timer or second timer. Um, 
I really hope that this was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and if I left anything out, because this was kind of, you know, really quick, and I've been doing this for uh, years now, so if there's anything I left out, or if you have questions, please leave them below. Again, hit that like button if you enjoyed it, uh, and please subscribe for more content that involves, you know, drum corps, marching band, band directing, uh, music education, the whole nine yards. Uh, again, we're just, we're trying to go to one video a week. We're going to see how that goes. Um, so yeah, I hope you've been enjoying the content. Uh, and I guess until next time, we'll catch you guys later.